Hello and welcome to this introductory tutorial for Motion Live 2D, which is the newest plugin for Cartoon Animator 4. So Motion Live 2D is a motion capturing plugin that allows you to stream facial data and some head and upper body data to control your 2D characters inside of Cartoon Animator 4. And this is done through a regular RGB video camera. So you can use a PC webcam and you can live stream and capture your facial animation data to animate your 2D characters inside. Now this is a paid plugin and you can find it on the Reillusion website. So just give a quick search for Motion Live 2D. And once you install it, you can go up to the main menu here where it says plugin. Click on plugins, Motion Live 2D, and that will open the panel inside, which is, as you can see, looks very familiar and very similar to the Motion Live uh, panel that we have for iClone 3D. So inside Motion Live 2D, you'll notice that we have several sections. We have the gear list here, and we have the character list. Now the gear list is basically um, a selection of what hardware I am using to control my character for motion capture. So there's two, two profiles that I can use. I can use the face 3D profile, which basically uses an RGB video camera or a PC webcam. And then I have the live face profile, which uses an iPhone 10. Okay, so with the face 3D um, profile for a webcam, I can control face and I can also control body. And for the live face uh, profile for an iPhone 10, I can choose if I want to control face or I want to control body or both. And then at the bottom, I have to select my character. In this case, I just have to click on my character in the main window and you'll see that it appears here. So now what I want to do is I want to connect my face 3D uh, profile. Um, I want to connect this to my hardware, to my webcam, right? So the first thing that I need to do, I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to double click on the face 3D application here. This will basically open the tracking panel and you can see me right there, all right? So just a quick briefing on this. Uh, we have the status here on the left, resolution, tracking, FPS, and everything else. This is basic info that which you can control from the settings panel here. So in the settings, I can choose which hardware I am streaming from. In this case, it's a C922 um, webcam from Logitech. And I can also choose the resolution of my camera. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. If I increase the resolution, can I get better facial capture? Well, technically, yes, you can get a little better in, uh, in facial tracking, but of course that depends on the specs of your machine. If you have a video card that can handle it, you can go higher. So you can test out to see what, what works best for you. Likewise, I can choose to rotate my video if needed to, or just leave it as it is. And I can choose my video frames per second. And I recommend just leave it at 30. I think that's this is pretty standard. Um, and at the end, I can choose if I want to turn off the show marker. Okay, these are the markers for my face. Or I want to turn off the show info on the left-hand side here. All right, so just let's just leave that as is. I am going to go back into my application. So let me try to arrange this a bit. All right, so now that I, after I arranged my camera position here, my panel, and then Motion 2D Live, um, let's have fun. This is what I like to do. So the first thing is I need to connect my hardware, my webcam, to my gear list. And we're gonna do this through the face 3D panel. Now notice one thing. Up here we have the status info. It says disconnected in red. So in the in the gear list uh, for face 3D, as soon as I click on this button here that says connect, you'll notice that the face 3D panel will turn green for a green status. And it'll say connected. So let's do that now. Connect. There we go, it's connected. And um, yeah, we're good. So let's do one at a time. I'm first going to do the face here, face 3D with my webcam for face. I'm going to go into my character for piggy. Now here, you might want to be, you might feel tempted to click on this checkbox. But what you need to do is drop down the gear selector. And I'm going to tell Motion 2D Live that I am using the face 3D hardware. So there's two different things. The one, one, the first, the gear list is going to connect 
a device to my motion live. Now this can be multiple devices. I can connect my webcam and I can also connect, let's say an iPhone 10 at the same time. So these both can be green. Um, but my character will be controlled, face-wise will be controlled by Face 3D, which is the webcam. All right, so just to clear that up in case you're thinking, why is there a drop-down menu here? Great, so we have my face cam connected, uh, my face 3D connected, and I'm going to set the zero pose. Now the zero pose is to calibrate my face. Um, basically when I do this, I have to click on preview. I have to click on um, the space bar. And once I'm previewing, I'm gonna look straight at my camera and I'm going to set zero pose without any movement. This is to calibrate my face to the camera. And this also works if I'm sitting at a different angle. If I calibrate, it'll try to calibrate at that angle that I'm at. But ideally, you want to be looking forward, okay? So let's give it a try. I'm gonna go to preview and then press space bar and then we're going to look at the camera and set zero pose. Set zero. Mm hmm up, sides, rotate. Aha, very nice, all right. So that is for the face. But what if I want to also control part of the body? Well, I can do that too. Just like we have the gear list here connecting face, I can have face 3D connect to the body. So let's select that there. And I'm going to tell the character that the character's body is being controlled by face 3D. All right. And just like we have uh, that set zero pose, I can also do that for the body. So, so basically what's going to happen is that the movements of my head will dictate the movements for my character's upper body. And these are going to stretch and move depending on the movements that I'm doing. So let's have some fun. Let's go to preview here. And I'm going to tap space bar, and then I'm going to set the zero pose again. Okay. And I can do side. I can do up and down. And I can zoom in. Great. So now that we know how to connect our face and our body, well, let's start recording something. You'll notice that we have the record button here. And this works the same way as a preview. I'll tap record and we'll record this motion, which we'll later see inside the timeline. So let's give this a run. Spacebar. Mm-hmm. To the sides. I like the zoom in, this is nice. And stop, all right? You'll notice here that the time scrub moved forward. I can bring this back and you'll see that all that animation was captured. I can play this back here. Mm -hmm. To the sides. <laughs> now it recorded my voice because I had uh, this microphone thing enabled, but you get the idea, that's fine. Um, so that's how you can make a, a quick recording. And now if you want to see that animation, I can go down to the show timeline or I can tap the F3 on my keyboard. And this will open my timeline track. And you'll see that for my character Piggy, I can click on motion here, the motion track, and I have the motion file. Look at that right there. That's the motion file for the body. And I can also do the same for the face. And I have the Visami tracks and the puppet clips that I, that, that I generated. Now this is very useful because later on, if I would like to edit or copy or save all of these, I can, and I can save these into my content uh, manager and I can save them and apply them to future characters. All right, we also have one more feature that might be very useful when you're recording on a big screen or if you want to do things in full screen mode. So let me close down the timeline here and I'm going to maximize my cartoon animator. So maybe sometimes you want to make you want to you want this this panel to not be intruding in front of your character. So there is an option. If you go to plugin motion live 2D, there's a panel there that says panel display settings, which is for this panel. And I can choose if I want to bring down the opacity 
um, for my Motion Live 2D so it's not intruding in front of my recordings. And I can also do the same if I want to hide it or hide it during preview or hide it during my record. So let's say if I want a preview here and I could click on preview and as soon as I tap spacebar you'll see that my panel went away. So this is a very useful option if you want to do this in full screen or if you don't want that panel to be overlaid on top of your character when you're doing all your cool recordings with uh, Motion Live 2D. All right, so that's it for this uh, tutorial. We hope uh, you find this incredibly useful and uh, stick around because we're gonna have more advanced tutorials for Motion Live 2D. Thank you.